Whoa, no way. That's crazy. We're meeting here. It's me, the best starter from Pokemon Brilliant Diamond here. That's insane. Welcome back, everybody. Minecraft has dimensions, and these dimensions are really, really cool. They're one of my favorite parts about the game. The Nether, the End, they're sweet. Of course, these dimensions could always be expanded, kind of like the Nether update. Maybe they could make the Nether, I don't know, like taller or something. More bombs in the end for sure. But also, they could always add more dimensions. I mean, technically, after all, this game could have like an infinite amount of dimensions. That would probably be terrible, to be honest. But what about one more? What about a brand new dimension with custom biomes, custom structures like airships and villages, and even custom loot? That could be pretty cool. Today, we're going to take a look at the Paradise of Old. I mean, wow, I gotta be honest, this is basically like the greatest accomplishment of all time, like humanity's pinnacle of achievement. It's a massive pack, it's really cool. Today, big shout out to Spadoo King for the pack, there's a link to it down in the description, check it out if you like it. Right by the description, you may have heard there's a like button. Maybe leave a like on this video, I would really appreciate it, and if you're new here, subscribe. Videos like this all the time, notifications and you'll never miss them. So in the intro, I actually kind of lied. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, it's actually me, Waddles. So our journey today begins from the very beginning of a world. If you're going to drop this pack into your world, you need to drop the pack into your world before the world even exists. I love Dimension Packs. I feel like there's so much potential here, like I said in the intro. I look at Dimension Packs all the time, on camera for videos, uh, off camera just for fun. And this is definitely, not an understatement to say, one of my favorite ones. It's really cool. Make a world with this pack, and when you spawn, you'll spawn with a brand new book. The book is called The General Guide. The General Guide is, predictably, like the name says, a general guide. Tells you a little bit about the pack. Now, this pack is so massive that it actually has a wiki of its own for the recipes. There are some custom recipes here. Custom items to actually access the dimension. Custom armor. Custom books. I mean, who doesn't love books? Books are great. If you can read, books are maybe your favorite thing. I'm going to assume you're doing all this in survival, but to save a lot of time today, because this is a late game pack, we're going to speed things up a little bit. So we spawn into a world. Let's talk about some new armor really quick. We find a bee, then we take the bee out. But then tragically, we realize we shouldn't have taken the bee out because it's not how it works. We just need honeycombs. We could have made a bee farm. It would have been so much better. To check out the custom armor, honeycombs. The custom armor, <laughs> trust me, trust me, it's good, it's good. It's made out of honeycombs. Yes, honeycombs of all things. The custom armor is basically bee armor except it looks like gold armor. So this is the armor right here on breaking one, protection two on all of this stuff. If we have a full set on though, we get a special effect. That effect is gonna be regen two, except it says three, but trust me, it's meant to be two. <laughs> But it's fine, it's fine, we let it pass. So with the regen too, if we take uh, damage, we're gonna regen pretty quickly. Check that out, that's pretty sweet. Now, it's a little bit of a, like a balance here because you have gold armor. Gold armor is clearly nowhere near as good as netherite armor, but the regen too. Do you want regen too or do you want really good armor? It's a decision that you're gonna have to make. Honestly, I feel like armors like this kind of have a spot in the game. It could be potentially really, really cool. I mean, if you play this game, you know how it goes. You usually just speed around the caves to get diamond armor and then jump over to the nether to get netherite. And then that's that. That's basically the armor set that you use for the entire world until you get into Lytra. Then you swap the chest plate out every once in a while. But that's kind of boring. Like, there's so much potential. The game is so big. Things like the turtle shell helmet, I think they're really, really cool. And so I would love to see more custom armor types in the game that do different things. But anyways, speed around the game. This is a late game data pack. You're going to want to do... The end. So here's the end. I found the stronghold right here in the in the open. It's crazy. It doesn't even look like one. But yeah, believe it or not, that's the stronghold of this world. I go into the end, and now I'm here. And an advancement right off the bat. Uh, to be honest, though, I think it's kind of a bug. I think we should get this advancement as soon as we actually enter the, the proper dimension. But it's fine. It, it's not that big of a video. There are custom advancements with this pack. So we're inside of the end now. So far in the game, once we've got up to this point, everything is exactly the same. Like, pretty much. Now it's dragon fight time, so we're going to want to take out the dragon. Except, big thing. With this pack, if you want to actually go to the dimension, you're going to need dragon's breath. So you need glass bottles for the dragon fight. After that, it's just a normal dragon fight. You know, you fly around with a sword, you take the dragon out, and then you say you did it all in survival. It's pretty sweet. Even better, if you have access to commands, you take the dragon out right away, and then no way. The dragon's breath. It's all on the ground right here. That's perfect. Now, this is the start of the setup that we're going to need to access this new dimension. Dragon's gone. Back to the guidebook. The guidebook has a little bit of information about this pack. It's pretty cool. This is the thing that we spawned with. You definitely don't want to lose the thing. So, on the second page, we have information about getting to the Paradise of Volt. To access the Paradise of Old, we need a Rod of Aether. We're going to need a couple Qs, an E, an R, and then some more Qs. The Q is Quartz Crystal, the E is End Crystal, and the R is Rod, End Rod. Now, technically, you could just start the Dragon Fight, grab the Dragon's Breath, and then leave, but taking the Dragon out might be a little bit smarter. Go to the Outer End, get the materials for End Rod. So here we go. I've done it. Wait, <laughs> wait, I, I don't think it's actually that thing. I think it's Chorus Plant. I'm pretty sure Chorus Plant is what you need for the End Rod, right? I can never remember. 
I like late game. I was reminded of the statistic by Azuma in the Clash of the Creators that I did recently, that there's this crazy statistic out there that a ton of people have never actually crafted a shulker box in Minecraft. If that's you, eh, that's cool, that's fine, I understand. But like, that's insane, you're missing out a lot. I feel like the late game of this game could always be expanded. It would entice people to do those kind of late game things a little bit more. So to actually be able to craft the rod that you need to access this dimension, you need a lot of things. You're gonna need an end crystal, you're gonna need blaze rod, which definitely was chorus fruit, and then you're gonna need quartz crystals, which I don't know. I, I guess it's just nether quartz because it's working right here. But yeah, quartz crystals. Then you get this thing right here. This is the Rod of Aether. Now, by the way, there's a resource pack for this pack. If you don't have the resource pack, it's not going to look right at all. I made that mistake the first time. But anyways, the Rod of Aether. Now that we have the Rod of Aether and Dragon's Breath, we can actually use this thing. So once you've crafted the Rod of Aether and you have Dragon's Breath, literally just hit the use button and you're teleported to the paradise of old now right off the bat we're falling if we look down we have slow falling and we're drifting down to the ground it's pretty sweet i like this entrance to the dimension so let's say we were in survival inside of the paradise of old right off the bat you really kind of don't need to worry about things as long as those flying fire things aren't nearby those things are really really dangerous those are called spirits they're a hostile mob inside of this dimension it looks like they're burning but from my experience i don't think they will actually ever burn <laughs> if i run over to this thing i think it will literally just stay burning and, and circle around for a while and deal a ton of damage if we're talking about what the mob is actually made up of uh, it's like a phantom with something riding the thing uh it dives and it attacks me and does a lot of damage you know it's a bad mob it deals damage this is where the regen 2 armor comes in uh because instantly the regen like kicks in and it tries to start healing me now i don't know if you can hear what's happening but the thing on top of the phantom is uh literally shooting at me like it has a bow and it's gonna attack me <laughs> and it's not good as you can see this thing is dangerous for sure the best way to take this thing out is probably going to be a ranged weapon so by this point in the game hopefully you have a good bow bring that bow with you to this dimension it'll help out a huge time really quick i threw this thing together it's really not much but something like this will help you out huge time inside of this dimension so with these mobs really dangerous but you definitely want to take them out in my experience the best way to take these things out is try and get rid of the phantom first it'll lower that thing down to the ground then you can just take it out ranged 100 percent though this thing is really strong you don't want to get up close so once you take the phantom out the phantom's gone this thing is going to levitate down to the ground uh this is a good opportunity right here to land a couple shots on the thing it seems to have a decent amount of health like this is a pretty good bow right here and it's taking like a couple shots but eventually keep taking the thing out and yeah you'll take the thing out now right here this time we got this bow right here this is a really good bow we could take this thing and throw it in the trash because that's like that's good it just needs infinity however there's other loot that we can get too and actually loot that is a little bit better than just the bow the bow is nice but if you already have a bow it doesn't really matter with mobs like this in this dimension this is where things like the honey armor comes in handy like huge time you don't really have to worry about like regen or anything like that because the armor just takes care of it for you it's kind of overpowered yes for sure but it's nice so check this out the celestial bow doesn't have the same enchantments every time no matter what though it's always going to be a good bow here it is here's the other thing that you can get it doesn't seem to be a very common drop but it's a command block <laughs> okay not actually it's a crafting ingredient crafting custom recipes definitely a thing with this pack if you're playing the pack and you're trying to figure out how to craft things i definitely recommend checking out the wiki i'll link it down in the description as well i'm not really going to go over the recipes today because they're literally just recipes so check out the wiki in terms of the other mobs that i've been able to find inside of this dimension i've been able to find pigs and sheep endermen for sure bees as well Oh yes, and also the villagers that live inside of this dimension. So over this way is one of the villages. The villages are like absolutely amazing looking. Look at this thing. This is a village. We have quartz all over the place. Quartz is a common theme here and stone as well because it's kind of end linked. There's a portal over there and then the villagers. Now the villagers inside of this dimension, they're piglins. The piglins are armed up like seriously huge time sometimes. Uh, that one has iron armor. That's like pretty good. Uh, but over here is netherite armor. This is literal netherite armor. The piglin guard, insanely strong. Strong. To be honest, I have no clue what to expect with this thing, so we're gonna set our spawn. You can definitely set your spawn inside of this dimension with a bed like normal, it won't explode. Gold armor on the boots, I mean, they're piglins, so maybe that will help. What do you think about me? Do you think anything? Um... No, we're cool. The gold armor helps. Okay, cool. So the villages, the villages themselves. Like I said, lots of quartz here. I don't know. It's your call. You could come here and raid this place for all the quartz, which could be cool. Or you can set up like a base here, like the quartz and the structures inside of this thing, the sword statue. Pretty cool. That little Colosseum thing that we looked at, that's nice too. Here's a shrine looking thing with a block in the middle. It's called a forestalling stone, another custom block inside of this pack. And then over here, one more statue. The statue is a hoglin, which brings me to hoglins. Hoglins are another mob that you'll be able to find spawning inside of this dimension. Also the other passive mobs, but hoglins hoglins are dangerous clearly they're like tanks it's gonna make this place really dangerous to navigate so maybe consider bringing a crimson fungi to keep them away 
it'll help. So check this out, the spirits that fly around, the piglin guards, and the piglins in general that live inside of these villages do not like these things. If one of these things wanders over here, battle happens. The piglins will try and take the thing out. Uh, the guards with the crossbows are way better at this than the ones with the swords, but yeah, they're going to take these things out. They'll fight eventually. Oh, you had netherite armor, my guy. <laughs> That's not good. The back inside of the village, though, because I love structures really quick. That four stalling stone that I picked up, what is it? Well, it's this thing right here. And what it does is repel spirits within a 32 block radius. So if I drop this thing down, like let's say like right there, that's going to basically act as a, like a little bit of like a security buffer. The spirits will see this thing over here and be like, oh, no way, definitely not. To pick this thing up, all you need is a pickaxe. Just mine it with a pickaxe and you get it back. The village structures, though, we have a ruined portal right here. They were like trying. <laughs> uh, you got pretty close, I, I guess you could say that. Um... They, they were trying and then there's also houses inside of the village also a farm melons over there if you like melons which is cool okay melons over there beets over here maybe they need a little bit of guidance with uh what they should actually be farming but anyways a house inside of the house shulker boxes except they're not shulker boxes they're just trunks you can't seem to interact with them they're just labeled as trunks which i guess is kind of cool it's like decoration and then a room back here excuse me there are beds here if you forget a bed you can bring these. Hi, it's me, Waddles Waddles, internet's busiest Minecraft gamer, and it's time for a building review. I like the aesthetics of the sound. The buildings are really cool. I like that roof shape. That's really, really nice. With the end stone jungle wood, it's pretty cool too. How do they get jungle wood, actually? Well, the forest right there, you see it generates all over the place. I like the buildings. The build style is really nice. The piglins also can use doors, so they like the buildings too. They can go in and out. Can you barter with the piglins inside of this dimension? Well, yes, you can. You can give them gold ingots, and then I think the bartering is all just normal. I think you should just basically get normal barter loot. Not 100% sure because bartering is kind of random. Soul Speed 2 right off the bat. That's pretty cool. Blackstone right there. Spectral Arrows. Uh, yeah, the, those are all normal. Here's another building. From the outside, it looks pretty similar, but it's different. No beetroot stands on this one. If we walk around the building, we have a room back here with bookshelves. It's like, a, I guess, a library. That's what we'll call it. Looks like there's another trunk right here. What happens if I... Oh, if I... Oh, you can open it. Oh, that's huge. That literally changes everything. And the piglins didn't care if I did that, too. That's literally huge. I didn't realize that. All right, well, back to this house for me. It is. Uh, we break that. It looks like chorus root, beetroot, maybe a little bit of gold, and a book. Here's another one right over here. Break that. More chorus fruit. That's cool. Some more gold. A hoe. A wooden hoe. That's crazy. And a book. Okay, so that instantly makes these villages way more interesting. You can actually break these things and get things. Now, it looks like consistently these things are not exactly the best things, but they're still things. It's actual loot that you can get from these towns. That's really cool. Well, that loot, good or not, definitely makes these villages way more interesting. We love structures with loot inside of them. So the villages, it's a different aesthetic than normal Minecraft, but I like it. I feel like it fits the dimension. Moving on. Sadly, tragically, and shockingly, the end in vanilla Minecraft is all still one singular biome. This dimension is not. Right now, we're inside of the Paradise Plains biome. If we move over here, then we're inside of the Paradise Woods. And actually, over here is the Paradise Jungle with the Hoglands. The Paradise Jungle, really, really cool looking. I like how the trees are built out of non-normal tree blocks. I mean, the wood is there, but like, Shroom Light, that's completely different. And then the Terracotta over here, it looks really, really good. And the jungle. So inside of the jungle, the hoglins are here. Really, really dangerous, like I was saying. And then these spirit mobs. These things seem to spawn all over this entire dimension. Not really the biggest deal in the world, but look at the grass color inside of this dimension. This is like intense green. I think that's maybe even more intense than like the normal jungle green grass. Like that is some strong, saturated green grass for sure. Oh yeah, even more different types of trees. The basalt tree. Ah, yes. It makes sense. Perfectly. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, though. I really do like it. So up here is another biome. This biome is the Paradise Highlands biome with Blackstone trees. The biomes are all pretty sweet. I like how the dimension isn't all just one thing. It's caught up into different zones. The trees are really cool, too. Particle effects definitely add to the unique vibe. But what about the underground? Are there caves here? Well, no, not really. There are random, like, pools of lava and water, but uh, not really caves. However, there is a structure that you can find under the ground. Check this thing out. It's a mine shaft, and the mine shaft is actually similar but definitely a little bit different. So all over the place in the mine shaft, the ores, there's quartz, and there's actually gold blocks inside of this place too. Remember, this is late game, so this stuff isn't really too overpowered. And look, a dungeon here too. So you can move out here and just set up a skeleton farm and live inside of this dimension entirely. I like the lighting inside of here. I don't know if it's because of the end stone or... Oh, that's a vex for sure. But this is just a normal skeleton spawner. The vex didn't come from it. And you see what I mean? Gold block on the ceiling right there. It's gold. But anyways, that other new mob, it's called a Stealthy Spirit. I think it went away, maybe even just despawned, but it's a Vex with a Diamond Sword. Very dangerous, super strong. This pack is huge. This could like literally practically be its own series or like a two hour long video. It's massive. We're not going to hit it all in today's video, but there are two more things that we definitely need to check out. 
So right here, a quarry. I think this is a different biome, except when I found the quarry, it's usually like pretty small. It's basically like a quartz mine kind of. There's endstone showing up on the surface and then the quartz right there. The quarry is different. Like inside of the paradise really stands out. The endstone right off the bat, the particles are actually different here. The ambient noises are the nether explosion ones and then the water. What happened to the water? Like what? <laughs> what is that? Is that water? Okay, so it's structure hunting time, and that's a crazy village. That wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but look at this thing. These villages can get, like, really, really big sometimes. This is w way bigger than that other thing that I saw. That other thing is, like, nothing that we just checked out. This is, like, a proper... This is a proper city. Like, with these sweet buildings and everything. The tower, the spiral staircase in the middle of this thing. This is so cool. I mean, like, what even is this thing? Is this a dinosaur skull or something? Or, like, a statue? Like, what even is this? This is so cool. Okay, this thing is big, and it's sweet. I was checking out this pack in a different world and never found one of these things. We're kind of running out of time today, but if you'd like to see more of this pack, uh, yeah, definitely could do that. There's clearly more structures. There's a couple more biomes that we haven't checked out. There's a lot more to it. Maybe like 10k likes and I'll make a part two. We'll check out the other armor sets, the other weapons inside of this pack, and the other structures. Because this thing is sweet. And so, finally, today, the blimp. This structure right here. This is one of the blimps that you can find inside of the pack, and it looks so, so good. It's such a cool-looking structure, like floating up in the air. This is amazing. I actually really like the idea of more floating structures. It would definitely give more of a use to the elytra. Like, you go into the end late game, you get the elytra, you can fly around your world, which is great. Like, that's really, really cool. But, like, other than just, like, traveling around, what do you really use the elytra for? Like, you don't get the elytra and go to the sky dimension or something. So structures in the sky would be cool. I mean, of course, you could just build up to these things, but uh, th that's not really the point. So there's more loot inside of this thing, and this time it's actually pretty good. Two diamond helmets right there. Like, that's really, really good. Leather armor, I don't know about that, but diamond helmets, wow. This room has hard crates, which are basically the same as trunk. It's like a loot chest, except it's hard, which means you have to hit it more. Maybe it's going to be better loot. Mm-hmm. Floor two of the blimp starts with a control room. Amazing view up front and navigation supplies right there. So, you know, like traveling things, feather, books. There's maps all over the place. Going back on floor two, we have this control room right in here. I think this is more for just, like, aesthetics. Over here, we have... A bathroom? <laughs> Maybe? Ah, uh, anyways, moving back, we have this back room with cabinets inside of here, even more loot, dried kelp, delicious, and a music disc, which I just deleted, that's my bad. And then a ladder. The ladder goes up to the top of the blimp. Now be careful, the top of the blimp is dangerous. There are even more custom mobs inside of here, enderlings. They're basically these flying silverfish things that deal a lot of damage. And the top of the blimp. Legitimately, this makes me want to build a blimp in the 1.18 series and use it as a survival base, like something kind of like this, because it's such a cool concept, like... A blimp inside of the sky and everything's inside of the blimp that you need. I don't know. It's just really cool. I like the structure idea and I love this dimension concept. There's so much to it. There's a whole nother set of custom armor, custom weapons that we didn't even get to today. And clearly even more structures that we need to take a look at. 10k likes and I'll make a part two. The Paradise of Old, a late game expansion that adds an entire dimension with tons and tons of custom loot and really interesting things. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. On the end card of this video, I'll leave my data pack showcase playlist. If you like data packs just like this, check out the playlist. There's even more packs inside of it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's me, Waddles. Goodbye.